Thank you. Thanks to all of you, Superflex and Jan Peter Hammer. Um, here from Superflex are Jakob Fenger and Björn Stjana Christiansen. And um, yeah, just maybe start with Jan Peter's work. Uh, thanks for putting these works into the program. It's, uh, it was really great seeing them. But uh, maybe as a starting point, you can say something about the like how you came up for the idea and uh, how you started it. A uh, kind of thing that I had in mind was uh, um, uh, other film that you did actually uh, that was based on a poem, as far as I know, that had kind of like similar, uh, similar uh, addressing similar ideas, like the question of uh, kind of egoism versus altruism, and uh, it seems to be kind of dynamic that you follow up in terms of referring to a literary a literary text on one side and then putting it into something uh, new, a kind of new film, the filmic experience. Maybe you can talk about that. Okay, I don't know. Uh, can you hear me or do I need to... Uh, uh, can you Yes, uh, first, uh, okay, this was, uh, are two very different films. The second film actually is uh, not made for the cinema. Uh, it's, it, it was done for uh, a presentation on a monitor. So it was a little bit surreal, like with the rhythm, uh, with the puppets, it's, it's supposed to be really low key and it was shot in a way uh, which doesn't really fit the cinema setting. Um, so also in terms of the speed, it's meant, it, it was produced for a monitor with, for a group show where actually you even need headphones and then uh, the sound is a little bit closer and the puppets are more alive. And it's... Uh, It's true, like uh, most of the time, uh, literary sources are my starting points uh, because uh, I find uh, their identity, which uh, like are diff difficult to write uh, yourself, like there are points like these uh, novels or poems are famous for a reason. And in literature there is, uh, yeah, that it has been mentioned uh, often that there is uh, a quality which is very difficult to uh, uh, to get without like the um, when you only work with films and images so I put text was always very important <coughs> and um, the film you're referring to mm -hmm. uh, this is based on uh, uh, this famous novel of uh, uh, Mandeville uh, Bernard Mandeville which uh, first uh, uh, lay out, uh, lays out uh, like one of the uh, important uh, uh, crooks or like uh, fun f fundamental ideas of neoliberalism that uh, egotism is uh, something uh, society um, uh, like that it ha that it uh, that it helps society to prospering that it unleashes uh, creative. Uh, Uh, forces, and this is kind of uh, like a little bit what I'm trying to uh, do. Uh, that it has uh, to um, address like some of those uh, what I think are the structures, underlying structures. If they are, uh, uh, they are not only neoliberalism, but they are kind of deep-rooted beliefs in society, which I try to. Uh, clarify in the mm -hmm. films. Mm -hmm. How how you how do you shift them then from like being this kind of of course written in this case it is a written poem. Uh, in what we saw today it is of course Fernando Pessoa's book from 1922, uh, which mm -hmm. uh, has its own form. Uh, but the qu question that I always had when I was watching the film that you made, how much like you know you rescripted and how how you proceeded in this or your, how your process was and turning this into this dialogue between the banker and the moderator. Okay, I have, um, like, uh, like I have the novel, and, uh, okay, uh, then you have the idea that you make in a television, uh, in a television uh, studio, which, like both films, like, kind of emulate television settings, which, I, which really helps the viewer to identify. If you do, like, a film setting or something, a, 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 a situation you invent, um, I think this is uh, with a completely different uh, has completely different conventions as if you emulate a television format, uh, which I like to do. Like I think, um, uh, and then I have uh, like okay, uh, the help of my girlfriend uh, Anna Tashiro Pinto helps me a lot with uh, adapting the the scripts and. Uh, 
and uh, editing a lot my scripts I have like it's very important to the condense the scripts to have all the things uh, uh, I think that that's actually the most important thing to get rid of all t- uh, the things which are not necessary and uh, that's uh, was a, with a banker that was a lot of fun because I read the novel and I loved the core of the novel but they were all like, but I thought uh, first oh this is so outdated anarchist meant something completely different but when you then start to uh do the research how to how you can that de- adapt to another time frame then you really start to understand the text and uh, then also that history between uh, like Max Stirner 19th century egotism or the egoism egoistic anarchy till today it kind of fills up automatically so you make this journey like of the development of those ideas mm-hmm. uh, from this like like over the 40s, the 70s, till mm-hmm. today. That was actually what I thought was was the most fun to making the film. Mm-hmm. That's why I was like wondering how much maybe also in the in the novel or like it says already like, you know, be what, what you were capable of like saving or like, you know, giving giving into the dialogue. And was was kind of like, oh, this is, of course you have the phrases that are like referring to... Uh, something that is very, very nowadays. But then I was wondering, like, you know, how much you really were capable to keep in from the actual literary source. So... Yeah, um, I kept a lot in. I, I love Pessoa's text. I think it's extremely clear. I, I, I changed the meaning because Fernando Pessoa it was, in the end of the day, a nihilist, a nihilist and monar- even monarchist. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to have that the uh, film has a different message than the novel has. Mm-hmm. It was uh, led to a really interesting uh, Q&A conversation when it was shown at uh, uh, Indy Lisboa. There were uh, um, v- a very uh, interesting intellectual from Spain sitting in the in the audience, and he was exactly addressing this, like so that Fernando Pessoa, uh, that it's a very dangerous novel, and that he's and he was very critical of it, and he says, uh, and he's he he couldn't uh, distinct the film like from what he thought about the novel, or he didn't, he just didn't. And uh, it was an interesting argument that actually it's so charged, the novel, like that the left is not really identifying with it, but mm-hmm. I think it's, has, it's a rich, has a, has a how to say, mm-hmm. rich fabric. Yeah. Maybe we can shift over to you guys. Um, and also the first question, of course, like maybe uh, to how you came up with the idea I mean, I was very, very curious, of course, after seeing this film. And then, of course, you have been working with a hypnotist before. So it's the second film, I think, or second second film with a hypnotist that you've been doing. Uh, I, I found it really amazing how you were doing this. But maybe you can explain how you came to the idea and uh, um, what well, which uh, context uh, <laughs> you were presenting sure. it um, so far. I mean, it's, it's true, it's like the second film we did with a hypnotist in this kind of setting. Um, the first one was done for competing art fair in London mm-hmm. uh, some years ago, um, where it was kind of a, it was a series like of four small, like uh, of a series mm-hmm. of hypnoti- hypnotism, which was shown right before the news on Channel 4. So it's kind of another setting where you actually, before you're mm-hmm. supposed to watch whatever's going on in the world, you're mm-hmm. being hypnotized. Uh, but in that case, it was the, the, the issue we were dealing with was the uh, issue of the financial crisis, which was, in our view, was very much like a psychosis. Like, uh, it was like, at that moment, affecting some, but a lot of people are just following it with it. Or somehow it's like, uh, like we, treated, we tried to treat it as a psychosis. Maybe we could like do something with that. And then the hypnotist was taking to you through these four different steps of you know, getting deeper into mm-hmm. this kind of mm-hmm. financial crisis and, and, and at the end of the day, accepting the situation. Um, and then with this one, it was kind of another, uh, some years later, or f- uh, five years later, I think. The first one. Uh, it was in 2008, right? Yeah, and the other one in, uh, was a year ago, um, and it's dealing more with this kind of issue, which is related very much to the other one, that, that mm-hmm. we have a work life, and we actually mm-hmm. spend a lot of hours working, and if we don't have a work life, we are in deep trouble, and also if we have too much work life, we're also in trouble, so it's, it's kind of... Uh, Trying to deal with this kind of uh, very like basic problem of our lives, mm-hmm. but through the through the hypnotist, mm-hmm. as a, as a person who can actually both like take you into a deeper level, but also perhaps like you know give you some kind of like small hole you can climb out mm-hmm. out of somehow. How how did you work together? Like I mean, did you pre-script it and? Um, <laughs> 
Well, I mean, you, they, they are real hypnotists. That's the point. Yeah, they, are, they are not they are actors. Real, I mean, this is are, mm. true. <laughs> Actually, when we the first guy um, which we work with with the financial crisis, he was this kind of um, you know he's a kind of hypnotist that will like um, make you not smoke anymore. That's kind of his business. Uh, and we had a meeting with him, and and we were kind of you know you're in this situation where you don't really want to look him in the eyes because you're a little <laughs> afraid of what might happen. Um, and then at some point in the conversation, he said, well, don't you want to see what I can do? And we were like all like looking down into the table and said, oh, sure, <laughs> I want to see what you can do. And then he picked, I mean, we are three in the group, and he picked the other one who's not here today. That's not the reason why he's not here. <laughs> he picked him, and then he said, okay, I'm going to take you. And he started to do this kind of hypnosis thing on him. And uh, it took him like, I think, a minute. minute and then he, was, he couldn't say his name. His, his name is Rasmus, he was like, rap, rap. And then, you know, it was this kind of funny game where you could actually control him, like, completely. Like, he, first he couldn't say his name, and then after that he re released his uh, ability of using his own name, and then he couldn't move his feet. So it's kind of a very fucked up situation. Um, so he was hired, this guy. But then when, when working with them, of course you have to, I mean, we have a, a script, and these people are very afraid of doing some kind of, I mean, they don't want to, I mean, there's a lot of things going on with hypnosis, like they are misusing their powers or whatever mm -hmm. uh, in different ways. Um, and they want to be in, they don't want to be in that situation, but still they want to move on with the, with the concept and, and try to go into some layers of hypnotism. So for some people it might work, for some, uh, some others it might not work. Um, but then when you do the script, it's kind of, it's a situation where you have to, of course, work with the hypnotist because they have mm -hmm. their own language, their own way of saying things and, and you know, mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. And 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 particularly the beginning of the film, uh, the uh, way of entering into hypnotism is a uh, is a uh, is a uh, steps by the hypnotist. It's it's his choice. It's the way that he he believes that he's able to uh, to uh, say persuade you mm -hmm. into 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 going into other other layers. So you cooperated also in terms of like how the look of the film was. That was uh, no, not not so much like in terms of also creating this kind of. V vertigo kind of no, we, momentum, we were not or? collaborating with him on uh, how, how it was uh, set as a film but more on the steps that you had to go through mm -hmm. because it was not a script we gave to an actor that's the reason why he is a hypnotist mm -hmm. so this using his uh, his uh, methods mm -hmm. of uh, creating this bond mm -hmm. they, they always speak about a contract mm -hmm. so before you enter into sessions you uh, you create a contract which is a trust mm -hmm. um, And you can, you can, in some levels, you could refer that to, let's say, the trust you have with the financial system, with the banks, with the with the loan structures, and so on, and so on. Mm -hmm. That there's a certain trust when you take a loan with a bank, and so on. And you could argue that that you know is also is a uh, is basically collapsing, so it becomes a theatrical uh, piece uh, society mm -hmm. as such mm -hmm. that, that slowly collapses uh, over over time. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, and and the two different uh, hypnotists uh, used similar methods, but still they were they were very very different in their mm -hmm. way of dealing with uh, hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, uh, as you said, like you use them in different uh, scenarios. You use them at Channel Four. You have been. What, what were your different experience? Did you get feedback from from the presentations that you have been doing there to this? Well, the interesting is when you uh, present on TV, mm -hmm. there's no feedback, in a sense. Uh, it's it's on it's on TV. People sit at home and and they watch it. Uh, there's there's discussions going on mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it is when you when we later on presented it as a film, we we we, we cut it together as a film. It was also presented at the Freeze Art Fair mm -hmm. as a as a film, a black box you enter. Mm -hmm. And that as a one-to-one, -one, it's, it's a different size, so that's more a relation to the to the person in size, mm -hmm. and and you stand there and it takes you through all the all the steps mm -hmm. as one film. Uh, so of course, there's quite a big difference mm -hmm. in the way that it, it is being perceived. Mm -hmm. uh, at Channel Four, you will watch it uh, three minutes at Tuesday. The next session, you would watch on uh, on uh, Wednesday and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it was every time every, every evening there was a new episode mm -hmm. in a sense. No, I was just asking specifically, like, you know, m maybe there is some response then that you get from, like, TV uh, officials that said, like, oh, we had, like, a lot of response to that. <laughs> like, you know. Actually, we were, we were watching it in a hotel, 
yeah. in London yeah. when it was shown the first time, and obviously we were looking out the window afterwards, like to see what would happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, we didn't see much. <laughs> okay. No, and the other thing, why the back of background of my question was, of course, like you know, when you said, like you know, you do, you're, you're making a contract. Basically, that's also something that you could say about, like sitting here in the cinema, we all sign a contract for a certain amount of time, and like uh, this is. Uh, kind of like challenge that you put into, like, you know, or put, put onto the, the cinematic apparatus, challenging that one in a way. And so that you, at certain points, I, I, as I remember it, right, you use the word tool, as the, you, you refer to your works as tools. So is that a kind of, uh, kind of momentum that to use this work as a kind of critique, as an apparatus critique, the, to challenge the cinematic experience, to challenge these kind of fields so, and establish a criticality? I think it's more like relating directly to the subject, actually, mm -hmm. than than the cinema, like in the than the cinema as such. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the way, like, I mean, we have a very broad way of de defining tools, mm -hmm. um, and that in this sense means more like you know this film potentially can do something, but it can also be used as an example or as an idea, um, uh, as a as a possibility of moving somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's more kind of the way that we would see it. Mm -hmm. I don't think we like, of course, also as you said, like there's a big difference on showing it in an art space or yeah. in this setting or in yeah. a in a in a TV. Um, but I mean, for me, I don't really. I mean, there will be different responses, but I like the the diversity. I like the way mm -hmm. I like to show it all places. I don't mm -hmm. really care so much. Yeah. Uh, we could open up. Are there questions from from the audience? Make yourself seen. Because otherwise I would say like that we could like answer all the very personal hypnotic questions <laughs> concerning this experience maybe and the exp exper experimenting with hand puppets like in a more informal setting outside and we will all be there if you have questions to all of us. So um, thanks for presenting this, thanks, thanks for, for being watching. here and thanks all to, you, to all of you for coming and um, enjoy the evening and enjoy the art fair over the next days. Bye.